Aleluya, what a Savior, what a friend, glory, 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 aleluya, aleluya, what a Savior, what a friend, glory, 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 aleluya. for tonight we are grateful to you for your precious ministry thank you for transformation by your precious holy word thank you because you are bringing a revival in our hearts by the ministry of your word lord we receive grace this evening as we fellowship together and with our friends who are online that lord god will cause that which is your intention to be expressed manifestly tonight. And I'm praying for as many friends who are following, that, oh God, by your mercies, that good work which you have begun in us, you will, you will finish it, you will complete it, you will perfect it. And, oh God, I pray for as many who may be listening to me tonight who are heavy-hearted, who are burdened by needs, who are weary, who are discouraged, who are at the verge of losing hope, that, oh God, by your mercies, uh, once again, your word will bring courage, would, would impart strength, will grant strength and insight, or that will help them to be able to adjust to your original counsel, irrespective of their feelings. And that, oh God, you will impart them with might by the Spirit in the inner man, to the end that your name alone is praised and your name is glorified. Father, help us tonight. We open up our hearts to receive the ministry of your word in Jesus' precious, glorious, awesome name. We have prayed. Amen. Good evening, everyone. God bless you. As many who are online, feel free to chat on the MixLR chat uh, space so that we can know as many who, who is listening and where you're listening from. God bless you. Good evening to you. This is part three of our audio series, The Man, The Message, The Multitude, and The Messenger. The Man, The Message, The Multitude, and The Medium. The man, the message, the multitude, and the medium. In our last class, we began to study the scriptures. Having done the foundational teaching on what is man, and then we were able to identify certain things about man. That man is a dependent being and that man is a created being because man came from God. 
and that man is a moral being because there is a moral fabric in the heart of every man born of a woman and that inner police called conscience still pricks him at one point or the other that thing that makes him feel bad when he does wrong even though we are in a generation that seeks to suppress the truth however there is still there is still that faint speakings of the conscience but we said that beyond that man is also a love being a love being in the sense that man was actually designed to become the object of god's affection that man was designed to receive the love of god to experience the love of god and to express the love of god to reciprocate the love of god because love is the default nature of our god uh, but as a result of sin, a lot of things were altered. But even at that, there are still traces. Every man likes to be loved. Every man wants to be accepted. Remember Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. You're going to find self-esteem, okay, acceptance. And this is why many give in to peer prayer. You know, in a bit to want to impress and feel among and feel appreciated, celebrated. Some even compromise their personal standards and values just so that they can fit into a mold or blend into a category or a trend. Okay, so every man has within himself that desire to be loved. But you see, the greatest uh, fulfillment you can ever get is to come to that point where you experience and understand the love of God in Christ Jesus. And understanding that is going to help give you a healthy self-esteem. All right, it's going to impart some confidence in you and gratitude will be your natural response will be what will be birthed because you are too grateful for what god did for you in sending jesus christ to the cross and then i think uh, last session we talked about uh, the fact too that another attribute of man is that man is a tryon being tryon not in the sense that man is trinity like god is trinity three persons in one man is not three persons in one but man is trion in the sense that man has a casing called the body which god molded from the dust of the earth but that is not all god breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul okay so so man became a living soul because god breathed into him man became a living soul because god breathed into him okay so it was the breath of god in man that made man come alive to be able to relate all right with the external surroundings all right with the cosmos and then to be able to express the will of god how by first discerning the will of god okay having that sense of connection with god and so sin broke that that router, that uh, that connection. Originally, because man is trion, man is spirit, he is soul, and he is body. Okay, so it's not as if man is a spirit and then the body is nothing. No. If I want to hit you, now you're not going to say, if I hit you actually, you're not going to say I hit your spirit. Is that what you say? You will say I hit you. So, the, the total man is both the spirit, the soul, the body. And this is why the scripture says that what we do with our body is also very important. Why? Because your body too represents you. Okay? Men don't see your heart, but God sees your heart. Okay? So, man is a triumph being. And then we said that the implication of this is that because man is a triumph being, that means he also has the seed of eternity in him. So it is not just, will you go to eternity? That's, that's really not the question. Everybody will spend an eternity either with God, you see that, and the precious saints, or without God, without hope, forever lost in hell and then the eternal lake of fire with brimstone and uh, sulfur. You see that? So this is why we preach the gospel. We preach the gospel because the love of God in Christ Jesus is what motivates our action. The death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension of Christ. We we also established that God sent Christ to die for our sins because in Adam, 
we all sinned. I think we established all that in uh, you know the previous sessions. But today we want to take it to another level, and I'm glad to see you all. God bless you in Jesus' name. It's good to be with you this evening. Let's check the Bible now. Matthew chapter 28. Remember our series. What's the theme of this series? The man, the message, the multitude, and the medium. Okay, so we are looking at part three. We have established certain points. God bless you. In part one, in part two, and today is part three. And in part three, we are establishing very vital truths, all right, from the Holy Scriptures. I'll just allow you to sit. Uh, just God bless you. Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. God bless you. Please put your phones on silent uh, so that we don't distract ourselves and our friends who are following us online from different places. Okay. How was your exams? I know. How was your exams? That's fine. Okay. And some of you are starting on... Okay, you are traveling on Monday, then starting. Okay, so we're in part three. I just finished establishing what we learned. How many of you were around in the last series? Oh, you don't have a place to see. Can you find a way to... Or you can... I can give you my... Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we have a fuller house today. Um, in... How many of you were around for the last class we had? How many of you were around? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so, again, let me just give a brief recap so that you can catch up. You you were around in the last class? Or the first class? The first class. First class you were around before, okay. Okay, so, in part one, the theme, the theme, you can write it down in case you haven't written it. The theme of this series is the man, the message, the multitude, and the medium. The man, please say it with me, please. The man, the, man. the message, the, message. The, multitude, the multitude, and the medium. I'm going to be quite brief this evening because I'm still traveling. So please pay attention. It's going to be fast but very powerful. Okay? The man, let's echo now the, the topic together. One to go. The man, the, man, the, the message, message, the multitude, and the medium. One more time, please. The man, the message, the multitude, and the medium. Without looking at your note, let's do it together. The man, the message, the multitude, and the medium. That's excellent. That's excellent. So let's see Matthew chapter 28. So the summary is that God created man. He created man for relationship. He created man for fellowship. He created man for intimacy. He created man for dominion. But the Bible tells us that having created man and told him to multiply, to be fruitful, to replenish and subdue the earth, Adam sinned. Please put your phones on silent. Adam sinned. And the Bible tells us in the New Testament, Romans 3.23, what happened there was that we were in the loins of Adam. And so because he sinned, we inherited that sinful nature. The Bible says all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and have what come short of the glory of God. And in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You know, I was answering a question in the last series, and I please, you try and get part one and two so that you can catch up. In last series, I was answering the question that how can a good God send people to hell? Should a good God send people to hell? How many of you remember? And then I answered the question. So try and listen to it. How can God, who is good, send people? Should he send people to hell? And then we said that one of the reasons why people go to hell is not because God took took them from the ground and threw them to hell. People choose where they end before they die. God is just, God is holy, but God is also love. So it is in his love that he sent Jesus to die. You see that? So if we reject him, is it God's fault? No. Are we together? And then we said that the message is not a church doctrine per se. The message is not really an argument or a debate. The message is not imposing rules, okay? And the message is not also lawlessness. But the message is the gospel. What saves is what the message of the gospel. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel 
of Christ Jesus, for it is. Somebody say it is. Now, notice the Bible. You know, you've heard this cliche that ah, all of us are serving the same God. It's just the way we are serving Him that is different. You know, I've debunked that over and over. You know, just for those who are coming for the first time. Listen, the Bible tells us that there is only one way to God. The Bible says here, Paul writing to the church, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Please just pay attention. Okay, sorry about that. It is. He didn't say it is one of the power of God. He said it is. That means it is only one gospel. You see that? And that means it is the power of God unto salvation. That means apart from the gospel, is there the power of God unto salvation? No. Can we access the power of God unto salvation apart from the gospel? No. So that means what you and I are called to preach as believers, as disciples of Jesus Christ, whether you're a pastor or not, is what the gospel and then in last session please get the audio i explained very simply what the gospel is so that when i don't know how to pray i don't know what to say Uh -uh. the gospel is very simple but very systematic you don't begin the gospel just by saying god loves you as important as and as beautiful as that is i tell people god loves you almost every time but listen that's not the total gospel that's not the total package There are people who believe God loves them and that's why they will go to hell. Because they don't know that God loves them so much that Jesus had to die because of something, their sins. If the sin of man is so great that God had to send Jesus, who is the son of God, to die for the sin of man, that means that if a man remains in his sin, claiming God loves him, there is a problem. Are we together now? So, the gospel, the message of the gospel is very simple. But here in Matthew chapter 28, let's rush today. I'll be very time conscious. Matthew chapter 28 verse Matthew chapter 28 let's see verse 18 to 20 now in Matthew chapter 28 okay the book of Matthew is actually the book that speaks more about dominion the kingship and the messianic dimension of Jesus now you will see Jesus as king in the book of Matthew all right you see the emphasis of the book of Matthew on kingdom That's why the word kingdom is used about 33 times in the book of Matthew. Now, this is what I want to share with you. In Matthew chapter 28, are you there with your Bibles? Verse 18 to 20. I want to show you something very beautiful and very powerful. We are going to read it together in unison and then I will share on it. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Can we go? One to read. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying... All authority. Only the ladies are reading. I want to hear us. Matthew 28, 18 to 21. To read, please. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 now, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. If you look at that scripture, you are going to find out that this was after Jesus resurrected. Here, Jesus has already hung on the cross. He already died. They already put him in the tomb. And the Holy Ghost already raised him up. Mary already came and found out that he is alive. He is alive. The disciples already heard that he is alive. While some were still doubting. Here Jesus now appeared to over 500 people. People saw him. It was no more. They went to hide him. It was obvious that people saw him. And here Jesus is now saying he was about to leave. And the Bible says Jesus now gave us what we call the Great Commission. How many of you have heard that word before? The Great Commission. Now, this is what the scripture calls the Great Commission. Now, notice what the Bible says here. It says, go. Somebody say, go. Now, most times, one of the things that happen when it comes to the man, the message, the multitude, and the messenger, is that although you who are now in Christ have been born again, you have been made a new creature. Remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. You see that? And all things have become new. Now, although you are a new creation, or you are a new creation, you have been given a message. The new creation man has one message. And that message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That, listen, Jesus saves from sin. 
This is why he came. This is why he died. This is why he rose again. To pay in full the price for your sins. And if you can put your trust in him, then when you, you will not stand before God condemned as one going to hell, but you will have eternal life beginning from the time that you receive him as your Lord and Savior. But listen, the challenge is not the message. Listen, the time is short. But the message of the gospel is ever potent. When a man is in the hospital bed, I want to picture this favor. A man is in the hospital bed and he's about to die. Does he need, what he needs at that time? Is he massage? He said, let's massage him. If he massage him, he won't die. Is that what he needs? Is that what he needs? A dying man does not need massage. What he needs is a savior. A man is drowning in, in an ocean. He doesn't need people playing music on last week and say, hey, well done, oh, hey, hey, yeah. That, it is not pity. Listen, many times what the church is doing is either criticizing the world, pitying the world, but we are not reaching the world. The world is, is cascading into an eternity without God to be forever lost. I mean, for, forever means forever. Yet, the church... Not, not the old church, but many of us, especially with the younger people, and that's why I'm challenging you this evening. Every man's soul is important to God. Listen, your soul is no more important to God than the soul of somebody else who has not received Jesus. The only difference is that you have come to be his child. And so by that, there, yes, you are valuable. Yes, you are precious to God. But listen, Jesus did not die for the Christian. Jesus died for every man. Please say with me, Jesus... You can be writing your points down as it comes to you, okay? Jesus did not die for the Christian. He died for every man. Do you know what that means? The Abba list right now. Jesus died for him. The smoker. Jesus died for him. The prostitute at the junction coming out every night of the hotel or the brothel or the motel. Jesus died for them. Even the madman. Jesus died for them. Every soul is precious to God. That means, listen, do you know what? When you stand before God, actually, there is nobody. The Bible says, I showed you a scripture in the book of Psalms, that God, the scripture says, David writes, he said, if you, O God, will regard iniquity and judge iniquity, O Lord, who will stand? Nobody can stand. And this is why Jesus had to die. Remember that Jesus is God too. Is that correct? Jesus said, I am the Father, we are one. That means that Jesus is God. So that means it had to take God to come and die in order to save man from the wrath of God. So there is no other way to salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Not in Muhammad. Not in Buddha. Not in... No salvation anywhere. He says the only way to salvation is Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. And there is no name under heaven given among men where we we should be saved except Jesus. So God already shows us that there is only one Savior. And that Savior is Jesus. But what I want to show you tonight is very powerful. Now here is what the Bible calls the Great Commission. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible didn't say. Jesus didn't say go and make converts. That means although the foundation is being a convert. Do you know what being a convert is? Being born... Again, all right, new believer, you said, ah, yes to Jesus today, I, I, he's my Lord and Savior, you declare him as your Lord, you believe in your heart, and then you are saved. That's not all weird. You see, most times, when you go to crusades, his father interpreted for the late man of God, Riyad Bunke. And, you know, when you stand in crusade grounds, and that's a beautiful thing, what do you see? You see crowds. How many of you know Riyad Bunke? Riyad Bunke. Or Benin. You know, this televangelist, you hear the crowd, you cry for all nations. I mean, you see the few, the massive crowd. Listen, that is only an introduction. That is not the height of living. Salvation itself is an entry into the kingdom. That is not all there is. Is somebody listening to me? This is why when Jesus met Nicodemus, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. But listen, seeing and entering is not enough. You must now leave the kingdom. This is why when Jesus was on earth, Jesus preached a powerful message. He said, I am, as long as I am in the world, I am the light. Do you know that scripture? I am the light of the world. He now said, uh uh-uh. He now said in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14, he said, ye are the light of the world. A city, somebody say a city. city. That is set where? On a hill that cannot be. Do you know what that means? That means you are not praying, oh God, let me not be hid. 
That's not really the prayer. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, Ephesians tells us that you are seated together with him in heavenly places. You know what that means? You before, who nobody reckoned with, the day you said, I'm a child of God now, I'm born again now, everybody start calling you, ah, pastor, <clears throat> eh, mommy in Israel, mommy in GU. And then when you do something that looks contrary to Christ, it is the world that will first, first notice. But if your other friends do it, they won't, they won't talk about it. You know why? Because you have now become a light to them. Is somebody listening to me? They don't need to come and tell you, do you know you are a light to us? Ah, 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 ah. By default, once you come into Christ, you are already a light to them. Now, the challenge is whether you know it or not is where the issue is. If you know that you are a light to the world, that means you are a leader. Please tell yourself, I'm a leader. Listen, you are a leader not because of a title. You are a leader not because of a position. In Christ, your leadership potential has been given to you. And the way you now lead your generation, the way you lead your generation, the way you lead, the way you live your life, the way you influence for others for or against Christ is now going to count for or against you when you stand before Jesus. That's why I share the post for, for the, some of you are not my broadcast list. I'm going to add you. I said, I don't want to stand before Jesus and then find out that, okay, Jesus is real. I believed while I was on it and I preached, but I was only able to lead maybe 2,000 people to Christ and over, let's say, maybe 50 billion people and then only 2,000. Then some will even come before Jesus empty and they didn't lead anybody to Christ. They didn't invite anybody to fellowship or to church to even hear the word and then get saved. They didn't share a tract. They didn't post any godly thing on their, even their social media was not preaching the gospel. And then they will start, stand before Jesus and say, Jesus, at least I, I shall go born again. They, they wasted their lives. When I can actually do more, lover, are you with me? When I can do more, why can I why can I use not use my youthful strength to advance the kingdom? Now he says the man, the message, the multitude. The multitude actually needs only one thing among other things, a savior. In the days of Jonah, how many of you remember the story of Jonah? Jonah. Jonah. You know Jonah. You know, most times when you are teasing your friend, you say you are sleeping like Jonah. Jonah was sent to which country now? Nineveh, God bless you. You guys are excellent. Nineveh, to preach the message of repentance. Is that true? Jonah was angry. The reason why Jonah didn't want to go is not because he didn't love God. The reason why Jonah didn't want to go is because he knows that as a prophet, when you say something, it must come to pass. But God told him, go and tell them. And if they repent, I will hear them. Jonah said, so I should go and tell them. So you will now destroy them again. So if they now repent, they will now be looking at me as a crazy prophet. Can you imagine? Sometimes it is selfishness. Sometimes it is flesh. Sometimes it is self-will that hinders us from reaching a generation for Christ. Sometimes, you know when you say, ha, do you know that I'm shy? You know, I, I encouraged you last week. I told you about the fact that, listen, the Holy Ghost in you actually gives you boldness. When you spend time in prayer and encourage yourself, the more you preach, the better you become at it. You see that now? Oh, I'm finding it difficult. Even me, my life is not 100% perfect. There's nobody whose life is 100% perfect. Our perfection is only in Christ. And then daily, we keep living and making progress in sanctification. But there's nobody that is 100% perfect. All of us are growing. But as you begin to preach the gospel, you yourself will be careful with your life. Do you know that? Because you know that you have now become a piece that people are reading. Such that even when they don't have a Bible, they, can, they will be looking at you and say, hmm, see the way she behaved now. And then she will now come tomorrow and say, hey, Jesus, Jesus, I beg. Many people have become a stumbling block rather than a bridge to Christ because of the way they live their lives. Jonah would have allowed self to hinder an entire 144,000 population would have lost it forever because Jonah didn't pray to them. The whale now took him, the belly of the fish, and then dropped him. When Jonah got there, what did Jonah do? Jonah preached a very short message. The Bible says that the entire territory of Nineveh repented in ashes and sackcloth, including the king. Guess what? Including the animals. The Bible says not even the animals ate anything for an How many did? Maybe seven days or so. All of them, not nobody ate. And they fasted before God. And they cried out to him. And guess what? And they were saved. Now, hear this. In How many of you have heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? <laughs> Do you know that Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? You know that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember Lot now. And Lot. 
do you know that Sodom had no Bibles? I remember I heard, was it a book now or a tract? Sodom had no Bibles. Guess what? God destroyed them. And they didn't have Bible. Now, we have Bibles, right? We have all kinds of versions on our, you can download 1,000 Bible versions right now. You can do all kinds of things. But yet, people will still go to hell, even though there are extra Bibles in some of our libraries. Personally, I have nothing less than about 18 to 20 Bibles. Now, but there are people that will still go to hell because some of us refused to preach the gospel to them. He said, hey, but that, is that not why they are pastors? Is that not what they are paying pastors for? If we wait for evangelists only and missionaries to preach the gospel, then we can be sure that God will not be happy when we stand before him. Because how many people can an evangelist reach? No matter what platforms they use, God has also stationed you in your hostel. Stationed my friends online in your workplaces. Stationed you wherever you are to be a light. Listen, when people talk about purpose, you know, I teach a lot on purpose. You can get our series on purpose. We have hundreds of messages. One of the things I tell say on purpose is that although you are designed and created for worship, that's not everything. Part of your worship, guess what it is? Part of your worship is becoming a light wherever you are. You are not created, oh, I'm created to be a banker. That's not purpose. The, the, even the purpose of purpose is so that you fulfill the Great Commission. That's why I often say, if your vision for living, if your desire, your dreams, if it has no place in the Great Commission, in going into the world and reaching people for Christ, then it's a waste of life. Is somebody with me? Brothers, please, can you sit so that the ladies can sit on the chair? God bless. Hi, good evening, sister. Good evening, sir. Welcome, good to see you. I'm saying, how are you, sir? God bless you. Okay, so glad to have you here. All right, please. Um, I need to apologize to our friends online. I, I wonder what they'll be thinking. Well, we are having new people joining, and so please let's welcome her. She's coming for the first time. Can we welcome her? God bless you. God bless you. What's your name? Sorry, Merci. all right, Mercy. So let's continue now. So Mark, when Matthew chapter 28, Jeff, how are you doing? Matthew chapter 28, we are looking at the fact that, listen, the Great Commission is for every one of us. And the day you start preaching it, that day the Holy Ghost rejoices over you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. Please put your phones on silent. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Now then, are you there? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Are you there? All right, excellent. Can we read together again? One to read. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were what? Pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled. Notice the word the Bible uses there. It says we are what? Ambassadors. Please, who is an ambassador? I know you guys are writing jam and all that. Who is an ambassador? Anybody? Huh? A representative. Success, right? Yes. A representative. Okay, beautiful. Who else wants to try? Who is an ambassador? An envoy. An envoy. Oh, bigger English. Uh, yes, you are correct. An ambassador is a representative of a particular country to another country. That means... That number one, and here, here are the implications. Number one, an ambassador is not from the country that is domiciled. There's nothing like I'm, I'm a I'm Nigerian ambassador by being in Nigeria. <laughs> an ambassador is coming from another country to come and represent that government here. Now, Paul the Apostle is writing to the church at Corinth and he's saying, We are ambassadors of Christ. Now, let me ask you a question. So, which country are you from? <laughs> she said Nigeria. According to scriptures, yes, when if they ask you in your exams, please, in government, which country? Don't go and write ambassador of Christ. They may fail you. Fulfill all righteousness. Write Nigeria. But really, really, our citizenship is in heaven. We are first citizens of heaven. Hi, goodness. We are citizens of heaven. Please say with me, I am a citizen of heaven. Citizen citizen of heaven. heaven. Now, that means that if I am a citizen of heaven, my priority cannot be the same with people who think that the earth is the only basis of their lives. This is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says that if in this world only we have hope, it says we are of all men most miserable. 
That means we cannot just live for Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of human needs only. Food, clothing, shelter, uh, acceptance, uh, self-esteem, um, you know, and all these things. He says, uh, after these things, do the Gentiles also seek after? He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we are ambassadors. Let me give you a few notes. We are ambassadors. Now, number one, we are called to preach a message that the world hates and rejects. One of the reasons why we see a lot of people in church, but not many, really in Christ, is that we have, we have, we have, we have watered down what the true gospel is. And so we, we do pep talks, we just try to encourage the people. While there is encouragement in scripture, listen, you cannot live healthy drinking vision milk every day. There are days where you will take bitter herbs, right? So that you can be healthy. The gospel does not only have a sweetener, it actually comes to heal. And most things you use for healing are not often sweet. Is that true? So, although it is uncomfortable, but listen, it is what saves. We are called to preach a message to a world that hates and rejects it. So, that means that, forget about, I want to be accepted. I just want my friends to like me for preaching the gospel. (laughs) It may happen. Glory to God for people that like us for preaching the gospel. But listen, on the larger percentage... God already wants you to make up your mind and see, in case you are not liked, don't be discouraged about it. The early church, read the book of Acts of the Apostles, they were persecuted for their faith. Do you remember? All the disciples of Jesus except for John, they died. Are you together with me? They died. Why? Because they preached the gospel. They didn't die. Paul didn't die because he was a lawyer. Uh, Peter didn't die because he was a uh, fisherman. Matthew didn't die because he was a tax collector. They died not because of their occupation. They died because of their profession. Profession not in terms of handworks or skills. Profession in terms of what they declared with their mouth perpetually. That listen, we are preachers of the gospel. Not because they were disciples with titles, but because they were true followers of Jesus Christ. A disciple is not just one who identifies casually. We have a lot of casual disciples today. I'm a Christian. When it is rosy, I'm a Christian. But ah, compromise. When compromise comes, this Christianity. Eh. I remember when, when we were in 100 level in the university and then our 100 level exams, something interesting happened. I, me, I have decided from once that I was going to be sitting in front. I know once you start talking in the school, you say, ah, oh, Pastor, you are talking, yeah, hey, Pastor. You know, <laughs> and then we were to write the first exam and it was a tough, tough exam. I was just writing like a robot. I was just writing as if I saw the question. I didn't see the question, but I was writing. Only for people to start whispering to me from the back. Ah, pastor, you are wicked. Hey, pastor, you are not te- you are not telling us the answer. Hey, evil friend, you want your friends to fail. Only you want to pass. All of us are 24 hours. Is somebody listening to me? Is somebody listening to me? Yeah. All of us are 24 hours. All of us have phones that can browse to do research. All of us came for lectures. The school authority said we shouldn't cheat. Why should I disobey the school? When God said I should submit to the authority of the school when they tell us to do what is right. Don't you know that if the school tells you not to cheat and you cheat in the name of helping somebody, you have disobeyed God? Is somebody with me now? Are you with me now? And so people got offended at me. Today now I still have some of them who are very close friends. And they respect me for my decision. For on, from 100 level to final year, I didn't look at anybody's script and I didn't teach anybody. But before exams, I taught, I taught my friends. I, you know, I had discussions with them and explained things to them. But not during exam. So you are not just a Christian on Sunday. When you start this guy, say, take my life and let it be. And then you say, ah. Me. And then on Sunday, on Monday morning, <laughs> Uh, um, uh, Math 101 or uh, uh, English is hard. Is hard. What, what, what's your answer? And then some people sit down at the back and six seats in front. They can, they can, they can see it. Uh, because somebody, maybe 10 years time, somebody that was sitting near you that ought to hear the gospel in your mouth when you are seeing that your eyes and they say, uh, Brother, I'm he say, No, back then in school, you, you were <laughs> because people are like elephants, they don't easily forget things. 
Even though you've truly become born again, your life, what you did, when, just like now that many of you are in hostels, how you are living now, people are taking notes. You may not know. Oh, maybe you are the girl. God, they please come. Please come. Look at this. Maybe you are the girl. Every guy, no matter. Don't worry. You see, while it looks as if I were you to now, that's, that's what's really Ah, you are an ambassador. Let me ask you a question. Okay, let's not use resident Buari. Let's use. If, uh, who, who is, who do you know in Nigeria that is a top placed person and you respect so much? Let's just use somebody. Any of you, please. Eh? Yeah. Huh? He's actually a pastor. What's his name? Pastor Johnson Suleiman. Okay, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Let's suppose Johnson Suleiman now calls you. What's your name? Mercy and says, Mercy, ah, please come, please come. And then you dress very well, you got there. And then he says, um, Please, I have a function, a wedding. And they've taken the old and everything. I want you to go and represent me there. Are you going to wear open chest? I say, uh, I, I, On behalf of daddy, we donate. Um, is that what you're going to do? No, 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 to be frank. Are you going to do that? Or, uh, Jeff. You know, and then that your dad is your dad is a barista, and then he comes and says, ah, "Jeff, I'm sending you to go and represent me in Accra, you know, on behalf of everybody in Kogi." And then you now wear your shakuta is like this, no belt, self. You are now holding it like this. <laughs> what a two-year-old child, self. You know, a two-year-old child can even still pull his trousers out. A nineteen, twenty-year-old guy can't wear his trousers everywhere. And then he's now you are now holding it. you are holding your trousers. That ought to be here. It's here now. You are now walking like this. Are you going to do that? Why? Because you are an ambassador. You know that you are an ambassador. Have you ever seen an ambassador before? Ambassadors don't dress any other day. There is a way you dress. You represent your brand. But in the kingdom of God, which is the biggest brand. See, when you understand your place in Christ, even if you don't have a designer wear, you are still comfortable in your skin. There are people. When we are on campus, there are people who got this virgin because they promised them iPhone. Now, it looks funny, but I mean, it's that bad that people don't have self esteem. They don't know that they are worth anything. I say, you know, that when I have iPhone now, once I hold iPhone, and I know it will be happening now, you guys are young. You know, once you hold iPhone like this, nobody can talk to you again. Say, Come on, nah, don't talk. Talk to my phone. Huh? It was black. Oh, thank you, Missy. I'm getting old. Okay, it was Blackberry. Blackberry. Blackberry Storm 2. This one. When you hold it like there to be only green. Like, pew, pew. Say, yes. But listen. It is not the type of your gadget that determines your value. It is eternal life in you that determines your value. Is somebody with me? Ah, I don't have money for clothes. All oh, my friends, they are wearing leggings. They are wearing joggings. They are wearing joggers. They are wearing wiggers. They are, it means those three clothes. Wash it. Let it be neat. Do you know, let me encourage you. Do you know that when I was on campus, there is a place called Fajui Park in Adoikiti. There is a guy that sells suits there. He's now the younger brother that is there. It was the elder brother that was my own customer. I was fellowship president, campus fellowship president of over maybe 300 to 500 people. Do you know that I will go and buy 3,000 naira suit? 3,000 naira suit. Not top only, up complete suit. <laughs> well, I know it's cold, but 3,000 naira. Guess what? I will dry clean it very well and I'll wear it. You won't know. Why? Because my value is not really in what I wear. My value is in the one that I know. So why? I'm an ambassador. Somebody say I'm an ambassador. Some of you are just <laughs> that's when you see girls dressing naked and wearing tights now on the streets. They don't know that they are an ambassador. That's that's just it. They don't know. If if I know that I'm an ambassador, I can't be wearing tight. I would imagine ambassador of US to Nigeria now comes and say, um, "Hello Nigerians with the tight." Uh, this two two fifty tight that they now say, hey, "I'm just an ambassador." <laughs> Even you will be like, "My TV, you know, rubbish." All TV job, which ambassador? Well, let's put something else. But unfortunately, this is what people are modeling to a generation. Is that true? You just hear that there is a BB something, there is a new reality TV show, and then the things that they are modeling there, you see, you glued to it. Some have even become BB Niger jellists on their WhatsApp. Le, le, le kusha. Hey, Le Kusha is going home. Hey, Le Kusha is a big thing from the house. And I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> then ask them, I'm, I'm sorry, we're having a Bible study. Can you invite your friends online? Pastor, it's, <laughs> it's not my church. My, 
My daddy has said I should not go to another church and not tell anybody about another church. Listen, the kingdom of God is bigger than your church. We are talking about souls. So people post every month. You will see, like, status like 20. That was what made me know that there is a show going on. So just ah, one person, another person, I say, ah, sorry, is this like, are they giving them money for doing this thing? Listen, when you stand before Jesus, it will not be about your likes or your followers online. It's going to be about what you did with your time and the resources that he gave you for his kingdom. The crown in the book of Revelation that will be given is not going to be crowned because, okay, so uh, how many uh, how many pictures did you upload on your status? How many people liked your picture? Mm. And Jesus, 5,000 people like my picture. That's my best picture. Mm. Then those, okay, add one star to his crown. Add one star to our crown. Eh, hey, Peter, give that one. one. <laughs> That's not what Jesus is going to do. Jesus is going to give you a crown because you persevered for the faith. There were days, listen, young guys, meet I'm a young guy. There, there are days when you, you feel like you feel like having sex. When when I, when we return by the grace of God, we're going to do some series. You feel like having sex. You, your one of your friends is just in one corner. He's touching one girl there. Ah, and you are feeling Aish. you are just in one corner. Like, Silent night. <laughs> holy night. Hmm. Which we have been there before it has happened to us. But listen, you don't allow your emotions, your body chemistry, make you lose your identity because you are an ambassador. There are days you would even have erection. You say, Yeah, I then you start dreaming of that girl. Just look at my African kids, I'm looking at my picture. Hey. That's what Ruben did. The Bible says Ruben's father caused him and said, Unstable as water, you will not exist. And his life. Samson did it with all the anointing. There are few people in the Bible that had the kind of anointing Samson had. Even the apostles didn't function like Samson. And guess what? The lapse of one Delilah. You know what I said recently? I said when a man's head is on the lapse of Delilah, his brain is on suspension. He, he won't be able to think again. Have, have, you, have you noticed guys who are always chasing girls? They, their mind is not in any... Even if a guy is coming, their, their mind is not even there. They are just looking and saying, well, where will I touch? You see that? But when you know that you're an ambassador, you know that, okay, sex is actually a blessing from God, but sex out of marriage is not the will of the kingdom that I'm representing. So I will, I will decide and do all my best to abstain. That's part of being the medium of God's message in the midst of a mama's world. There are people who say, there are no more virgins. There are no more virgins. See, forget you don't get how do you know? You know how, they, how will you know? It's not only wedding night, you know. Then nobody's a magic. You say you are here, I'm a very hey, all of us are lying, all of us, nobody's a magic. And then, then the lady, I, I, I met a lady in 200 level who was this virgin in 100 level because of this thing I'm saying. Her friends told her, Ah, yo, you see, you know, we are youths and I have to talk to us before we leave. Listen, uh, you know, she her chest, you know, they were very small, and then she said, Ah. So her friend said, oh, look at you. It's just small. Look at you. Hey, what's the size of your stuff? And now I said, oh. he said, hey, are they still selling that one in the market? And now, you know, the girl was, you know, because she didn't know that she's an ambassador. She was feeling, she was feeling dejected. And they said, to, for it to be big, you need a guy. One solid, correct guy. That you need, he will just be told, that when he massage you, after a while, you'll be, oh. You'll be, you'll be okay. You'll be in our category. All of us will be just massing together. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Listen, on the day of their matric, I remember this lady very well. And I know God is helping her. On the day of their matric, they brought a guy. No relationship with the guy. Not, not that they are married. How old is she that you want to talk about marriage? No, the guy is not responsible. He's an undergraduate to trusting his God, uh, well, trusting his parents to send him money to be eaten. He can't even buy his own clothes. He's waiting for Christmas money. And then that one came, and then deserging this lady because her friend said, hey, just, things, just that, and your virginity on the altar of till today. I don't know, know, maybe, but how can now? But that you know, that's terrible. But these things happen. I mean, little things your friends tell you, you see, yeah, that's why you know the blood blood gene. There's one latest Balenciaga, Balenciaga. Ah, you see, guys, see, ah, when I buy my own Balenciaga, brother. <laughs> You are an ambassador. You are beyond value. Even if you don't have money for the designer, your maker is God, not the designer. Is somebody listening to me? 
Designer's wear is nothing compared to you knowing that your real designer is in eternity. And he will come soon, but until then, we will represent him well. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Turn with me, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let's rush now. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Remember I said you are an ambassador. You are an ambassador. Hmm. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This is the reason why God sent the Holy Ghost. God didn't send the Holy Ghost for you to just... Oh, 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 oh. That's not all. Though. After doing that one, then you now go and do what the Bible says you should do. Let's read Acts chapter 1, verse 8 together. Well, shall power. Hey, welcome. Okay, our Bible. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. We have missed you. Now we're going to read it together with her. One, two, read. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come where upon you. And ye shall be Wait, listen, and ye shall be Stop your neighbor say, and ye shall be witnesses. Don't at this one. Ye shall be what? Uh-huh. Unto uh-huh. 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 U
is what authorized by God to go where, sir? Now, you see that what going to all the world, you need to get my message, uh, understanding and actualizing the last command. That one is part one to six. It's a series. I've already done the teaching on going to all the world. When he says going to all the world, it means it in every way you can think of it. Going to all the world means going to all the social systems. That's uh, every place that human beings live and walk, go there and preach to them. That means if it will take you travel out to go and preach. If it will take you to talk to the people in your locality, preach to them. If it will take you in your workplace as a banker to talk to your colleagues, do it. But go into all the world and preach. Notice he didn't say go into all the world and just give to them gifts. You know, some people say, ah, the gospel, once you just give people gifts, that's, that's not what the Bible said. He said, go and do what? Preach. preach. Now, do you know that that means that every Christian actually should evangelize? Is that correct? And that means that every Christian should preach. That means there should be a day I can say, Jeff and love, let's go. We want to go and preach. You will say, I was not here. We are big boys. Pastor, we are not around. Because it will happen. Once, I come, once you come back, we will find it. Maybe all of us want it. Just go and, let's go and do evangelism. And maybe uh, favor will just lay us on somebody. The person will just fall down there and like, power. You say, wow. Oh. Yeah, that means that, uh, you know. Let's go. Or Mary, you say, ah, they say, ah, are you the mother of Jesus? Before that one asked the question, the, the hand of God has come upon. Pa, say yes. Uh-huh. That one is speaking in tongues already. Mary, you say, ah. <laughs> but you see, we are authorized. Somebody say I'm authorized. So there's nothing like. Don't let anybody tell you, eh, ah, ah, eh, you can you preach like this? You that you are short and black. I say, ah, I'm short and black. If if God does not like me that way, he won't even get me saved. The only ghost is comfortable staying inside short and black. It's okay to he said, but I'm not really fine. Am I fine? <laughs> 24 hours of the mirror. Am I really fine? Alga, the presence of the Holy Ghost in you is beauty inside of you. Are you are you together with me? He said, I'm not really beautiful. I, I want to be beautiful. Beauty lives. Please tell yourself, beauty lives on my inside. Yes. An ambassador. So we have been authorized. So we are representing a kingdom that has never failed and that will never fail. Has God lost a battle before? We read in the Bible, he said, Ah, God lost that battle. Wow. No. No. Go share Eli, it can't happen. Imagine you are representing. Uh, What's this guy that won this boxing uh, match recently? Anthony Joshua. Do you watch box? Oh, you, but did you hear of one boxer that was preaching? Ah, Anthony Joshua. Okay, did you watch? You see this backer match? What's the name of this match now that they play that they beat some people 8 0 or something? Why you know that one? Uh, Bayan Baka. <laughs> who, who won? Is it back or it can't be? Uh, Bayan, it? Bayan, Bayan, Bayan Munich won. Eight zero. Eight two. Oh, eight two. Okay, they were able to give. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Now imagine before you used to have a Baka jersey, and then they now beat back Baka eight two. Do you know that that night you know what wear this? Most people that night. You know what you do? Then let's say you now have a Bayan jersey too that they just sent to you. Do you know that that night for that night? You go and wear the Bible. Say, hey, correct guy. Then everywhere you go, they say, ah, oh, these are the winning team. In Christ, you are in the winning team. You may be oppressed outside. You may be challenged. You may be facing things. But in Christ, you are in the winning team. And if you know that you are in the winning team, that means, listen, even if there is lack around you, this is, that's not the end. Because when we check the scripture, the story tells us that we overcame. Not we will overcame. We overcame. Remember Revelation 12, 11. They overcame by the blood of the... He said we overcame. That's our story. It's not about... We have already overcome in Christ because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. We overcame. Somebody say, I overcame. So it's not a wrong thing. You say, you're using past tense with him. Say, I overcame. Say, I, 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 say, I overcame. That's how I go to examination hall with a consciousness. You see that? I'm conscious that uh, I'm a child of the King of Kings. How will I read and say, he didn't enter for three days? Ah, he didn't enter for three days. I'll be reading his nightly. How? No, ish. Man is an intellectual being. Remember, they are teaching. Man is an intelligent being. By design, even without prayer, your brain works. Is that, when you ate today, did you pray and say, hey, God, as I'm eating it, imagine, the day you didn't pray, the day you didn't pray, you see that, by design, God designed your brain in such a way that no matter the condition, you can pick things. That's why when I prepare for exam on campus, it doesn't take me too much time. I've prepared and I've left. 
And then when I enter the examination with my suit, I don't drink. So it means I didn't brush. I just enter the of, oh, hey, why are you living like that? Well, understanding. Even your success in your academics is also a testimony. That, wow, you can say you are not cutting corners and you still pass more than us. Ah, then you must be representing a kingdom. Remember then, I finished first in the exam. I'll finish first. Only seven of us made the second class upper. Maybe three of us with four points. And I was part of them. Why? I have an understanding. If there was any first class in my, in my set, then we would be two who we went at the first class. But nobody had first class. It was just uh, seven class upper. And then the rest. You see that? Understanding. Your spiritual understanding guides your life. The Bible says they know not. Neither do they understand. They walk on in darkness and the foundations of the earth are out of course. So when people walk in darkness, it's because they don't know and they don't understand. But when you know that you're a child of the king, you are reading and he's not entering you, you lay your hands on your head and speak to you and say, oh God, what's going on here? And then it adjusts and you start reading and you start getting it. You are an ambassador. Please don't forget this. But listen now, although you are be sent to represent Christ and to preach, the next lesson you must know now is that the purpose of your existence is to be a light so that those around you can find their way back to God. Hmm. This is powerful. Do you know that every human being is actually looking for God? Do you know? That is, I don't believe in God. It's a lie. They are just saying that you didn't give them enough evidence. If they say enough evidence, they will. There are those who say, I don't want to believe in God. That's different. But everybody is looking for God, actually. That's why you see people bend down and be worshipping... Uh, they can carry this in and say, in our own country, this is, uh, eh, oh, eh. And they say, God said, that shall not bow down to any other God. So, since they can't find that God, we are not sure if it's the Christian God. They say, this one, let's worship this one. In every human being, is that inclination to want to worship. But the real worship that they ought to do is worship of the one true God. That's why when Paul got to Athens, he told those guys, he said, you are worshipping an unknown God. He said, it's that unknown God I want to present to you. That unknown God, his name is Jesus Christ, the one that came to die. It's the one that sent Jesus to die for you. And if you put your trust in him, you will not die in your sins. So you have been called to be a light. And when you're talking about light, you know that when you're talking about light, you're talking about purity. Do you know that if a bulb is dirty, it can't shine? Is that true? It can't really shine. But when the, the bulb actually reveals, it exposes that's why the Bible says the, the wicked, they run from the light. Why? Because it will expose their evil deeds. Imagine you are, you, are, you are living in moral purity. Such that even when your friends are watching, imagine your roommate is sleeping near you, for instance, and she's watching Bluefin near you. You're a child of God. That, that means she's not really convinced that about the movie. We are not really sure. I beg. I'm not saying carry gun and kill them. That's not what I'm saying. But there is a way your morality that is, no, this lady, ah, are you going to marry a pastor? What's your, your own is too much? <laughs> when they start saying your own is too much, and it's not as if you are trying to force religion or anything on them, it could be a sign that you are. Oh, some people is like the word of God is. Listen, it could be a sign that your life is beginning to make an impact. If the unbeliever stays comfortable around you till thy kingdom comes, that means that your light is not shining enough. That means if I live among people who don't believe in God, and for two years, a year, six months, they, they, there is no difference. First John 2 15. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then he begin he began to identify the things that are in this world. The lust of the eyes, uh-huh, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He said they are not of the Father. He said they are of the world. You are called to be a light. Shine brightly, righteously. The things that others will do and go scot free, even though they are sinful, even though you can also do it, but you say, uh uh-uh, the love of God constrains me. I can do it too, but this is not, this is does not honor God. I won't be found there. Number three. Thank you. At, at, at this point, I'm not sure you can handle it. But because of our friends following online, I'm also I'm still going to go ahead and share it. Now, please listen to this. A church cannot be a church if it is sustained by excitement. 
the goal of the word of God is not just excitement. You know when you go to church, woo, like disco, woo, 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 every Sunday, woo, woo, e, 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 e. dancing, 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 bouncing, cast to kind of service every Sunday. No, we are listen. We are born again by First Peter one twenty three. Being born again, First Peter one twenty three, not of a corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and abides forevermore. Do you know what that means? If you are born again by the word, you will be sustained by the word. Not imagine you are born again by the word and you are sustained by dancing. And say, ah, they didn't sing the latest song today. Our choir here, they are not. No, that's not why you are born again. What grows you is no excitement, it's the word. Let's say you came in and I was we were blowing trumpet, everybody were some assault. I said, whoa, 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 yippee, yippee. <laughs> it's nice, but that's not what grows you. First Peter 2 2. As newborn babes. Desire the sincere milk. Ah, when I first got born again, the first two years, I was cramming scriptures, memorizing Bible. I don't know the kind of born again people do today that they just got born again and for six months they've not opened their Bible since they say I'm born again. There is a fire that I put in your soul. You just want to memorize scriptures as newborn babes. Then it was a competition, but it was a good competition. Desire the sincere milk. We'll be talking scriptures with ourselves. Now I will say 10. Then I'll say, hey, you say 10. Okay, I'll say 12. I say 12. Say, ah, add one more. And then we recite chapters. You go to Psalms and carry chapters. Go to Romans, carry chapters. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The reason why we have flaky Christians today, Christians that you are not sure whether they are Christians or they are churchians or they are, the, you are not even sure, you can't even place them, is because they have not been grown by the word. When you give yourself to the word, listen, it does something to your thinking pattern. Is somebody with me? The word of God shapes your mentality. And listen, if your life will change, your mind must first change. The day your mind begins to change, it's like concerning finance. You've always believed that you'll be poor because your parents are poor. And then you began to see some things in the word of God. And you're like, ah, no. This is a new information. As you begin to adjust to it, although you may not see it immediately physically, but something is already changing in your mind. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 237. So is he. Point number four. So I was saying that a church cannot be a church if it is sustained by excitement. It can only be sustained by sound doctrine. Somebody say sound doctrine. Sound Not just doctrine, but sound, there are all kinds of doctrines flying around. Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. That you give yourself to teaching. You see, as you came for fellowship now, you know, there's no much excitement. Everybody's just coming here in the word. Is, see, as we begin to mature, it is actually Christian immaturity for us to be more happier for excitement and rejoice at the glamours than the word, than sound doctrine. Listen, elders who have gone ahead of us, they cherish Bible study more than any other thing. Have you noticed? They cherish Bible study more than they say, Oh, we have carnival, and in that carnival for three days youth conference, uh, the first day will be Suya night, the second day will be barbecue evening, the third day it will be carries and game and PS2, and then just in God's presence, the fullness of joy. <sighs> uh, the kind of Christians you are going to grow in that kind of an atmosphere. <laughs> say we train for basketball, just do bat yourself and just keep <laughs> And then in the evening, we just come and worship. And then the worship is not really worship. It's just a show. Let the popular singer sing. Let everybody just be looking at the popular singer singing. And we doing video. And he say, oh, how was the service? Ah, it was a glorious service. Yeah. <laughs> the glory of God is not the goosebumps that you feel in the program. It's you coming to that state where you are. You know that you are one with God. And you, are, you acknowledge his presence. Say, ah, God is here. Say, right. Uh, we don't know whether God is here, but ah, they hate the service. Ah, they were doing joke. <laughs> <laughs> and then people that have gone to learn dance to go and use it for their canal clinic, they've been looking for a place to dance that new dance. And they say Sunday service, we'll go and they do practice with their friend. I wish that's how people practice scripture before they go to church. And they went to go to church, they say, come and see the Lord. Hey, where? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Our souls are perishing at the level of But when the word of God grows you, eh, even when you don't have beats, you can dance on your own. You know why? You are responding to the drumbeat of another drummer, not the drumbeat of the world. So when the world is going this way, 
uh, uh, you, are, you are not moved. There are times where I sit down with the word. David said, I rejoice over thy word as those one who has found a great spoil. It's like saying, you. Yeah, I told you to open this bag now. You saw dollars there. All true dollars. And I said, you guys, you know what? I said, I'm going to use the Please just take it. It's the dollars are disturbing me. Just go away. Hey, Bing, please already check it. The who is near it? Give me the bag. <laughs> you see that? Why? Because there is a consciousness. But when you love the word, that sometimes you want to open your Bible and you, you, tears just drop from your eyes because you are so in love with the word. But you know that something is about to change in your life. That means you are growing. One of the signs of spiritual growth is that you are more committed to what the Bible says than what the surrounding says. Are we together? Let's round up as we prepare to pray now. We have seven more minutes. Okay. Um, ah, very powerful. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 to 18. I read. Yes. Wherefore, mm. come out from among them mm. and be you separate. Be separate. <laughs> Says the Lord. Says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Aha, uh-huh. verse 18, please. And, and will be, be a father, father to you, mm-hmm. and you shall be my sons and daughters, mm. says the Lord Almighty. Romans 13, 11. Notice that scripture is talking about separation from the world that I emphasized before. Be separate. Be different. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. You Be different. Are we together? Be different. So people say, oh, you are trying to show yourself that you're a Christian. It's nothing like trying to show yourself as a Christian. Listen, a puppy does not need to learn how to bark. It just barks. Mm-hmm. You see, I look at that puppy. It's trying to bark. It's not trying to bark. It's a puppy. You bark. When the nature of God is in you, by default, one is there, you are trying to, it's not you are trying to, that's who you are. You tell them, it's not, I'm not trying, that's who I am. Are you trying to now form your righteous than us? I'm not trying to form, that's who I am. So you are saying you are righteous. Ah, that's who I am. Are you saying you are righteous? That's who I am. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He made us right. We didn't make ourselves righteous. But because he made us righteous, and righteousness in our nature, we will live it because that's who we are. So I'm not trying to be righteous. I'm living my nature. Are we together now? Yes. Please, Romans. Where's that scripture and now? That, 13, 11 to 14. Yes, ma'am. And that, yeah. knowing the time, mm-hmm. that now it is high time to awake out. Out of sleep. Out of sleep. Uh-huh. For now is our salvation, salvation era yes. than, we, than when we believed. Twelve. Than when we first believed. Yes. Twelve, please. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. The night is far spent. Oh. The night okay. is far spent. The, the day, day is at, at hand. hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. What did he say we should do, Mas? Cast, cast, cast off, off the, works of the works of darkness. Yes. And let us put on the hammer of light. Mm. 13. 13. Let us walk honestly as honestly. in the now, day. Are you, are you seeing the character traits as an assignment? Which is when you get to go and read this particular passage again. Uh-huh. Honestly. Uh-huh. As in the day. Uh-huh. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Mm-hmm. Not in chambering and wantonness. Wantonness. That's lust and wantonness. And uh-huh. Not in strife and envy. Not in strife and envy. Okay. Verse 14 now. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus And Christ. make not provision for the flesh mm. to fulfill the lusts thereof. God bless you. Put on Christ. That means imitate his life. Adopt his principles. Be like him. He says, put on Christ. You know how you put on the clothes and they say, this is a, this is a shirt. This, this is color black. This is... Put on Christ. Like, you know how you wear a garment? They say, put on Christ. You know how you use a body spray? You know, they, they don't say you, you use body spray. You wear, you wear a perf, right? You put on Christ. Now you pass, they say, mm, that one is passion perf. You pass, they say, that one is brute. Eh, hey, it's very obviously brute. You pass, they say that one is Nivea. It's a pra. You pass, they say that one is Malaysia Womo. You pass, they say that one is Smart Collection. You pass, they say Calvin Klein. You pass, they say Joy. You pass it. All right, you see, you see that now. You see? But here he's saying, put on Christ. Do you know what? Every Christian who is truly born again and following Jesus Christ, one of the things that happen is that if you see another genuine Christian elsewhere, even if the person doesn't say, I'm a member of this church that that other person is attending, if they are genuine believers, what happens is that they are almost the same. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. You just say, ah, 
Is that brother exactly how he's behaving? Not because of their temperament or trying to mimic themselves. They are imitating Christ. So somebody wants to slap Orimi. So instead of saying, oh, God, just look at you. And, and she's just gentle. You say, eh? Hey. She's gentle. Wow. She's putting on Christ. He's putting. Somebody wants to fight Jeff. And Jeff doesn't brave us. Hey, you know where I'm coming from. Hey, oh, yeah. Mm-mm. And then you just. Now, I'm not saying let people deprive you because you are a Christian. Everybody just. Bam. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying put on Christ. Meaning sometimes you know what to do. But you feel that, okay, this can be an avenue to still reach this person for Christ. Then you... Mm. There are many things we can do. He says, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. You, you think I cannot wear torn jeans and be walking on the street? Who, who, who arrests me? I'm not even living with my parents for many years. I've been living on... So who arrests me for wearing torn jeans? And then I just tell everything. And I come and say, hey guys, I'm a pastor. I'm preaching the word. Come on now for the word. Come on for the word, somebody. Guess what? Guess what? Some of you will still can say, I even like that pastor. He's only steering you. He's not for me. And I swear, George, pastor, guess what? He's not for me. Hey, all this will you pastor. He's, only, he's not even wearing his feet. Look at this one. Just toy his jean. Correct, pastor. New. This is how they will reach this generation. Tear your jean. <laughs> but how does that, how does that align with honesty, modesty? Bible says, let all things be done what? In moderation. Why will I go and buy a new jean and, and, and it's, it's the turn one? You see that modesty. Or your friends are wearing tight now. You know, they say, I oh, just wear the stress or oh, all that. <laughs> Before, when we were young, we wore pants and ran around the street. We were, we were carefree because we were babies. No, you, when you say baby, wear pants, you say, hey, baby. No, you just it's a baby. But now we are grown. Big body, and we still want to be carrying the brain of a baby around. Abba, it won't be good. But you see that moderation. Not because I'm trying to prove to somebody that I'm better, but uh-uh, it's my nature. It's my nature. I, I, want, I, want, I want it to be that when, whenever somebody's hearing the gospel, thinking about Christianity, and they think about you, and they say, ah, ah, grace, favor, ah, being, being, ah, this is how they are. Thank you. Do you know that some of your friends may later come to Christ because of how you treated them even now? Later, they will just say, eh, sorry, I don't know. My boyfriend, the way he's doing, he wants to live. What can he tell me? You won't say, ah, let's pray. He will not leave you. We will tie him down. He will not leave you. <laughs> then you will let him know that, do you even need a boyfriend? Now, you don't need to say, you are a sinner. We are tying now, tomorrow. <laughs> you know, let, there, there are systems. That's why I told you the other day. Pray and, let the, pray and let the Holy Spirit also help you as you communicate the gospel. Sometimes you don't need to rebuke the person openly. Sometimes it's, you know, like privately, like that man came to, is he uh, the high priest now that came to meet Jesus? All right, and said, um, Jesus, how would I be saved? You see that the person comes to you, don't say, hey, oh, She just came now. Don't think you are not, all of you are. Then you tell the person, Okay, ask a question. Sometimes you use rhetorics. Do you, do you need a boyfriend? Say, ah, Then the person, nah, All my friends are having a boyfriend. I see because you don't have. Mm, mm, I need a boyfriend. Mm, think, I need money now. I need. Then later, as you begin to ask again, the person now begins to think that for you. The person may not talk the first day, you see that, but it's called relational evangelism. After some days, you keep talking, keep giving different viewpoints. Ah, then you hear things like, and I wasn't thinking about that before. Eh, eh, I didn't know now. Oh, yeah, sorry. And then gradually, say, hey, they say, you're going for one Bible. Say, what are they? What is that? We study. Say, yeah, sure, let's see. The person may not tell you that you are impacting their lives. It may be later when all of you have gone to your schools because all of you gain admission in Jesus' name. And then you now say, ah, thank you so much. What you did for me then? And you're like, do you know that there is a joy that comes to your heart that ah, into my life is making me and then you will now want to do more because when you are encouraged for doing something that is right you will naturally want to do more one more point and then we will pray for tonight as I prepare to fly oh thank you Jesus I'm going to share this please join on Sunday uh, I'll be online on Sunday from Lagos I guess please join what I want to teach is very powerful let us not mistake the kingdoms of the world to the kingdom of Jesus. They have heard people say, Christianity, all of us, we have come into the takeover anointing. We take over all the system of the world. The Bible does not teach that. Because when Satan told Jesus that I want, I will give you the kingdoms of this world and the glories thereof, Jesus rejected it. Why should we be praying to receive what Jesus rejected? What Jesus died to deliver us from us, we are praying that we want to have it. Is that correct? It's not correct. I'm going to explain the dynamics, all right? 
and how we can be careful. Now, does that mean you should not be successful? No. Does that mean you should not be the best in your field? No. Does that mean you should not take leadership positions if you have the opportunity? No. Does that, not, does that mean you cannot be a politician? No, you can be a politician, but I'm saying that the goal is not when you now, don't think that, okay, you now become the president of Nigeria. Do nothing because I'm the president of Nigeria, everybody will be born again. It's a lie. The system of the world is at opposite power with the system of the kingdom. The, the Bible says they knew God, yet they will not believe as if they know him to even be God. They will not even count him as anything. Ours is to shine the light. Ours is to present the gospel. But we can't force the world and say, all the world you must bow is a lie. Even Jesus, all the world didn't bow to him. But when he returns, every knee will bow. But unfortunately, many will get to hell. That's where they will now realize that he's king of kings. And he's lord of lords. But until then, our own lives will preach the gospel. Somebody say, my life will preach the gospel. My words will preach the gospel. My actions will preach the gospel. Can we bow our heads and just talk to God and say, Father, I will preach the gospel. My life will preach the gospel. I will bring you glory. I will bring you glory. Somebody's life will change because of me. Millions of souls will be won because of her. I may not be there yet, but Lord God, thank you. Thank you for where we are and where you are taking us. Thank you. We are grateful. We are grateful. My life will preach the gospel. Can we ask the Father and say, Lord God, we receive mercy. Any way that we have wronged you, in our thoughts, words, deeds, actions, reactions, expectations, relationship with others, can we ask the Lord?